All right, so I'm going to be uh, finishing the rest of these problems. I um, just want to go over something real quick here. I'm not sure if you have one of these. Um, I said kind of before that it's easy to find these online. Um, it is, but like you have to pay for a lot of them. And then it's like kind of annoying to get a high resolution one. This is not the best. I don't like the font. It's like, that sounds silly too, but like, uh, it's sometimes easier to read if it's like a better font and they italicize the angles and all this crap. But like, um, anyway, this is one of the better free ones I found. So here's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to circle um, some of the main ones based upon your assignment. All right, so I see the, uh, we have some of the sum and difference ones. So for number three, it looks like we're going to be using this guy. And note some things here about the, um, the plus and minus, those are going to match this one, whereas these are going to be the opposite. I kind of alluded that to that in the past video, how to handle those things. Uh, the other thing is the double angles. Where are they? Okay, all these here. And we have one of these, which we're going to use for number four. Uh, number five, there's like a number of ways we could do it, but it's probably going to be um, more of these guys. And we're doing the sign, so probably uh, that one. Okay. So it's just some stuff to keep in mind. Let me know if you want to copy this, I can email it. Uh, okay, so we'll back to this guy. So this, I'm assuming, is just, just your work for it, but the original problem um, gave you U's and V's. I'm doing number three. So you would be um, this, and V will be this. And maybe the original problem said something like, like this, and one minus tangent both of these. All right, so first thing you wanna do is identify the identi uh, identity that you wanna use. So this one is the uh, tangent sum. And so the way you tell that is there's a plus here and there's a minus here. So that's the sum. Um, So you have it on your reference sheet with probably U's and V's. Tangent V and then one minus this. All right, so what you see on the reference sheet matches the problem given, again, which I'm assuming is it will be this. So this allows you to bring this all the way down to tangent. Uh, and this and the reason why we want to do that is because these are not nice numbers. These twenties and tens, we don't know anything about the trig values of those. We have to use a calculator um, or table or something. But this we can consolidate them. So let's say that this is um, twenty plus ten degrees. And label everything, and then we have tangent of thirty. Tangent of 30 is something you ideally want to have memorized, but your teacher might want you to show the diagrams anyway. And so the way we make a diagram for these is, I see most of these are like shown in the first quadrant, like this, this, and this. This one is shown in a different quadrant, but re regardless, you could do that or you could just make a triangle picture. Okay, so since you already have the quadrant stuff, I'm just going to show you how I draw it. I usually draw like a 30, 60, 90 upright like this. Not that that matters. You could draw it on its on its side. You could draw it like this if you want. Whatever, how you like your triangles. So 
what's important is where we put the angles. So this looks like the bigger angle. So I'm going to name this 60 and I'm going to name this 30. Let's see if that is there. Um, <clears throat> this is 90, obviously. Now, cross with a 30, that's where you want to put the one. Um, your hypotenuse is two. And using the Pythagorean theorem, your longer leg is three. And that's the way all 30, 60, 90s work. So even if you didn't know um, the dimensions, we would say like this is x, this is twice x, and this is x root three. But we don't need that if you're just finding out trig values. <clears throat> right, so tangent of 30, so you're going to go opposite of 30 over the adjacent. So you're going to do this over this. So that is 1 over root 3. Okay, you got that. Um, and But as I mentioned in the previous video, you want to, want to rationalize that. So you would get root 3 over 3. So that comes from multiplying by root 3, top and bottom. 1 times root 3 is root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Okay, so final answer here, we would have root 3 over 3. I'm add some more detail here. I know these videos can be kind of long, but like you could always flash forward to get bored or whatever. So um, here is what you want to memorize is basically the uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent of the common acute angles. By that, I mean 30, 45, and 60. I guess by extension, 0 and 90. So... I'm not a big memorization person, but if I have to memorize something, I just make a chart and keep making that same chart until I'm absolutely sure that I know what I'm doing. So this is my messy table here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is fill in these particular angles here, starting with zero and going all the way up to 90. And so in between, we got 30, we got 45 and 60. And two lines here. I think you know most of these, uh, particularly like sine and cosine, but just a review of how you can make this really quick if you forget. So sine is zero, zero. We got to start with some knowledge there. And then um, I'm going to put a one two and a three and then I'm going to divide these all by two like that and then I'm going to square root everything now square root of one is just one so I don't need to write that then I could do this square root and this square root by the way it also works if you do zero over two if you want to start that way too and then it goes all the way up to one a sign of any angles have to be between negative one and one. Now, once you have that, everything else is super easy. So cosine, you're just going to reverse everything. One's on the right here. I'm going to put one on the left and go down this way. And so this is going to be root three over two, root two over two, root one over two, which is one over two, and down to zero again. Now, when you get to the tangent, tangent is sine divided by cosine. So we can divide these values. Zero divided by one is zero. One divided by this, that's kind of a pain because you have to you keep change flip, but you wind up with well, this value here, this one over root three, which then you rationalize. This divided by this, a number divided by itself is one. This divided by this, keep change flip again, that I guess give us root three. And then the last one you do one divided by zero, can't divide by zero, so that is undefined. So as long as you have a good idea about this table, that'll save you some time. But it's important to know how to draw the triangles as well. So I guess I'll just leave it up there for a second. Um, let me get rid of 
these guys here. So, I need coffee or something. I'm tired. It's too early to get tired. So, yeah, four here. Um, uh, I don't know quite what's going on here. Um, maybe because I, I don't know the original problem. If this was the original problem here, then I'm going to assume that you looked at your reference sheet and so from the reference sheet you saw something with U's and V's that look like this. So sign of and maybe it's a sign of two U um, equals two Sine u cosine. But regardless, if you look at a different reference sheet, it'll have different variables. All right, so you look at all of this and you compare it to that and recognize that you have to change it into um, sine of two times what you see inside, which is this. Sometimes if you put like parentheses around, it might be easier to see like that. Yeah. So in the end, that is sine of 14x. And we don't know what x is, so that, that should be the final answer there. Okay, so that's good. Just as a reminder here, just want to write in your uh, final answers from the last video when you rationalize them. Okay. Um, number Five is kind of a difficult problem. Um, you have sine of 255. There are a number of ways you could do this. First of all, uh, 255 is not um, one of uh, these sort of angles that we're used to working with. So one place you could start with this one is to draw a picture about where it is. So you have your 0, 90, 180, 270. I'm doing this because um, I look at this here, and this stuff wouldn't immediately come to mind. Like, I don't look at the number 255 and think, oh, okay, that's 300 minus 45. I mean, like, eventually you'll get there, like you do enough of these, but um, maybe maybe look where it is first. All right, so 255 is less than 270. All right, so it's like here. Um, we can think about what the reference angle is. That's one way to go about it. So the reference angle is always from the x-axis. So it's like this. All right, so that theta I just drew there um, would be 90 minus 15. Um, Actually, since this is 255 here, you can just say 255 minus 180. Okay, so that's 75. So instead of trying to find out what makes 255, you could find out which way it makes 75. Um, you just have to keep in mind something super important, and that's the, um, the signs at the end of this. So that's where we use these all students take calculus okay so in this region here um we could say sine is negative because that t means that just tangent and cotangent are positive all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find sine of 75 and just make that answer negative in the end so how do you make 75 well i go to these numbers here and I noticed that 30 and 45 make 75. So I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say sine of this equals sine of 30 
plus 45. And then I'm going to go to my reference sheet and figure out what identity I got to use for um, adding signs. I don't know these in my head. Um, well, you see this, this here? That's the subtraction one. Um, so the addition one's got to be the same thing, but just plus. So this is going to be sine and cosine. So sine u, cosine v. So sine of 30, cosine of 45, plus and then just switch them. Um, so it's cosine of 30, sine 45. Hopefully on the test, you could use a reference sheet. Oh, it's, it sucks. All right, so sine of 30, I'm just gonna use this, this red chart here. No more pictures needed. Um, sine 30 is one, cosine 45, use that. Cosine 30, root 3 over 2. Sine 45 is this. Sorry, I'm just looking at the final answer and just seeing if it's like, seems like it's the same thing. Okay, so multiplying across. Um, Oh, oh, okay. All right, I right, see what happened. Um, this is root two over four, and this is root six over four. You add these together, and you get root two plus root six over four. Now we're gonna make this negative. If you wanna make this this whole thing negative, you would distribute the negative. So um, that will make both of these negative. Now, if you notice that this answer is quite a bit different from yours, and here's the reason why. So um, you have a radical in the bottom. Um, if I were to rationalize this answer that you got, I would do root two and root two. Now when I distribute that root two, you know, get distribute from the back. It's distributing doggy style. So we get this um, and six. Root two times root two is just two times the extra two is four, which means you are on the right track. It just, that could be very confusing. So you wanna um, rationalize as you go along instead. Okay, now, an important thing to note about what I did. So I decided to use the reference angle, um, which means I I'm I actually computed the sine of 75. So it was important for me to remember to make that negative in the end. And that's something that I've forgotten to do sometimes. Um so that's the risky part about that. So I'm gonna go over what you chose to do. Um so you were looking at different combinations. Uh any of these will get you what you want. Um You chose this first guy, okay. Um, that's addition. Okay, so just like this here, sine of one angle, cosine of the other one, plus cosine of, which, you know, it's the opposite, right? You did all that and got, got the right answer. Um, let's say if I chose a different way to do this since we already discussed possible sums. Let's do one of the different ones. Okay, so one way to make two fifty five is to do this here. Oh, so again, this is uh, this is number five. I don't know if I wrote that here. Five. Another way, to number five here is to use a difference identity. This one, a different t with um, 345. 
All right, so I'm going to set this up as the sine of 255. That's the thing I'm trying to find. Equals. How does this work? Okay, so it's the sine of one thing. Uh, this is 345. And since the subtraction, the order does matter here. So you got to start with the sine of 300. And cosine 45. I don't feel like putting the degree symbols, so whatever. Um, minus the sine of the other one, 45. And cosine of 300. All right, sine of 300 is not in this chart. Um, so a picture could help with that. Um, Let's use the same picture right here. Um, 300 is like over here. Um, so the reference angle for 300 would be 60. That's 360 minus, minus 300. And my reference angle is always distance to the x-axis. Okay, so it's like doing, like doing the sine of 60. Sine of 60 is this. Down in that fourth quadrant, it's negative. So just take a look at that, just that, that step right there and think about how I got from sine 300 to this. I'm using the chart and reference angles. Picture uh, could help too. So you could draw like this, draw on your, this is all 300. That makes the reference angle of this last 60. This tells us that sine is supposed to be negative. You could even, you can close this up if you want to and um use the opposite and hypotenuse. That's kind of confusing to me. I don't like that way. Um I like to just figure out what the sign is based upon where it is. Yeah, rather than um rather than like label this like that. And this, I think it's a little confusing. Because when you whenever you label this, um, this has got to go. I'm saying negative root three because it's in the y direction. Um, that would make this part actually a positive one. Hypotenuse is always positive. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. Okay, so we have cosine forty five. We get this. Sine of forty five is root two over two again. And cosine of 300. Okay, I could use the same picture, actually. I could use this picture. Um, so I got everything labeled. So I'm going to do I need a color here to show you here. Okay, so this is the adjacent. There's the hypotenuse. That's positive one half. That makes sense because cosine is positive down here. And let me compute this. Whenever you do these, you're going to see a whole lot of the same numbers. You're going to see a lot of sixes and a lot of over fours and a lot of similar stuff like that. That was a dumb thing to say. I mean, we're doing the same problem. Of course, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, so this and this note that it's the same thing. The order doesn't matter there because you're just attaching it to, to the numbers. So. Um, the only thing here, I would definitely put this in one fraction. All right, so number five here are your answers here and here. This is not, that's positive. Yeah, that make those negative. Okay, uh, let me do number six and then I'll end the video there. Number six, we're using uh, radians. So we have the cosine six cosine of eleven pi over twelve. Most 
people, myself included, have a hard time figuring out how to make 11 pi um, out of fractions. That's difficult. Like what two fractions give you 11, 11 12th? So that's kind of, it's a bit awkward, right? So what you could do is you can convert this into degrees. And if your teacher requires you to show it with radians, just work backwards to find those. So to convert to degrees, you could always do this, 180 over pi. So let's cancel out the pies. And we got these cancellations. So uh, I do cancellations and steps. This is even, so that's 90. And this is divided by two is six. They're even again, so I can do 45 and divided by two and 45 and three, that is 15. Okay, so 180 divided by 12 is 15. And 15 times 11, okay, so it's 165. Okay. All right, so 165, we can kind of look at um how we can make that happen. See all this here, I don't know. That just that doesn't come to mind right away. Um, unless I do maybe some kind of picture. All right, one sixty five is over in the second quadrant. So I'm tempted to just use reference angles because this, this here is 15. And the cosine, okay, so it's AS here, is the answer is going to be uh, negative in the end. i make a note of that. Final answer is So basically, I want to find the negative cosine of 15. So this, I'm just going to maybe forget about for the moment. Let's make sure I have a final answer. Okay, so this I can make this with cosine uh, sorry um <laughs> That's an annoying one um. Because we had 75 before. 75 could be made with these. Let me go back on it. Maybe I don't want to do this. Um, 165. How can I make that? So I can kind of extend the list and think about these these sorts of numbers here. All right, so here's, here's my options. So you will have like 0, 30... 45, 60, and 90, and so forth. But then you have anything beyond that that's that would you would find as part of the unit circle. Um, so you would have one twenty, one thirty-five. One fifty, yeah, one fifty, one eighty. You got all those too. Okay, so those are just like second quadrant angles that have reference angles of thirty, forty-five, and sixty, and so forth. So you could make one sixty-five by doing, say, one twenty plus forty-five. Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. 
Oh, yeah, because actually, once you um figure that out, then you can convert those back into radians, just in case that's what your teacher wants. So instead of saying 165, we could say the cosine of 11 pi over 12. And then we use the uh, the cosine sum formula. Okay, that's very really similar to number one, but note that the signs are opposite. So I got to do a cosine of something, cosine of something again. Let me slow my roll here. Um, Holy crap, what the fuck just happened? Um, I use the eraser. This is really sloppy the way I'm doing this. Okay, so this one, I'm going to say that 11 pi over 12 is cosine. And let me write out the, the addition here. All right, so 120. You got to think about what 120 is in radians. So here's 120. This. All right, so 120 is made up of uh, 60, 60 and 30. Uh, that's not that's not where that is. 120 is like here, okay, because it, it's 60 plus another 60 like that. Okay. So going around the unit circle. Doing this for clarification here. That's zero. This is pi over three. There's two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three, and five pi over three. Those are like all your 60s, right? So let's write this out. This right here is 120. That's 120 and 2 pi over 3. So once you identify it in degrees, you can convert it back into radians. Unless you could do this all in radians, but that's that's super confusing. I don't really like that way. Um, 45 is pi over 4. Okay, so I kind of want to clarify what we did so far and what you want, what I want you to forget about. Forget about all this crap right here. First thing I did, took the angle here, made this into degrees by multiplying by 180 pi, simplifying. Then I figured out a way to make 165 with these kind of special angles here. And once I identified those numbers, I made it back into radians. Now we're going to compute it. So the cosine addition formula looks like this. You probably have it in terms of, of using these. So I'm going to guess what you might be seeing in your reference sheet. This is u plus v. And you have cosine of both things. And subtracting sine of both things. Okay, so if it's addition, it becomes subtraction with, with the cosine. All right, so last thing we gotta do is plug in and figure it out. So we get to do a cosine of two pi over three. Cosine pi over four. And sign of those things. You can see how com complicated these things get, so you definitely want to practice this a lot. Even if it's just these same examples to try to reproduce this by yourself, maybe try different angles and sorts of things like that. So
cosine 2 pi over 3. The reference angle for that is 60. So I'm looking at cosine is 60. So it's like 1 half. But it's got to be negative 1 half because where it is. It's in the second quadrant. Cosine pi over 4, that is 45. That's root 2 over 2. Subtract a sine 2 pi over 3. The reference angle is 60. And sine in the second quadrant is positive. So I'm going to leave that as root 3 over 2. And sine of pi over 4, that is 45. That's root 2 over 2. I mentioned before, a lot of these are going to have the same sort of looking numbers, just different positives and negatives. So this is negative root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4. Is this the same freaking answer as the other one? Um, it is. Okay. It's kind of worth exploring why that is. Um, yeah, let me go over that. Okay, so let's remember this. This is for number six. And we're getting the same answer for number five and six, which means that either I made a mistake or they're related sometimes. I hope it's the second one. So to do this, I want to look at where they are. Two fifty five is a little less than two seventy, so that's over here. And eleven pi over twelve. Well, if it was twelve pi over twelve, it'll be one eighty. Twelve pi over twelve is pi, okay, which is um one eighty. So it is some degrees less than that. 15 degrees less than that, like here. Now, if you look at those, those are right angles. So they probably have something to do with one another. Um, and I'm just going to complete the triangle pictures like this. Uh, so that's one of them going down to the x-axis. Here's the other one going down to the x-axis. Those are actually the same triangle. I'm going to draw in a little theta here for the reference angle. So, okay, I don't know what the um, dimensions are, but if I do this one, the sine of this, then I'm looking at the opposite. Okay, here's the opposite over here over the hypotenuse of that. And it's just uh, the final answer is negative because of where it is. I'm not, I'm not even pointing at the right thing here. Sorry. Um, opposite would be like this one. This is the 255 down here. Let me label that. What that is. Here's your 255. And this one is your 11 pi over 12. Or, um, you know, 155 degrees. Sine of 255 so that we would do opposite over hypotenuse. B or H Y B. My button is here. Let me just label that H Y B. Okay, and then the other one um is is cosine. So cosine is adjacent. Um, so the adjacent is right here. This part, that's your adjacent over the hypotenuse. I mean, think about it. Um, those are going to give you the same answers because the the opposite of the triangle on the bottom is the same length as the adjacent of the one on top. Okay, so that's why we got the same answer for five and a six. So that makes sense. I'm going to end it there.